Good morning. <laughs> it's a big day in the life of the church. We have our congregational meeting today, and we are coming together on our, on this is the fifth week of fifth Sunday of Easter, so we are still celebrating Easter. So um, I invite you all to stand as we begin our, our worship service for our call to worship. Lord God, we just come to you in this moment asking that you be the source of our worship. You be the source of our life. You be the source, uh, uh, the, the one that we lean to, to, lean, to, to guide our time together, Lord, as we come together and, and we do your business and hear your word and pray our prayers to lift them up to you. So, Lord God, we just come to you now as we sing in our praise and our, our opening hymn for a thousand tongues to sing. Amen. Again, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for those of you who gathered here together. Thank you for coming um, on this Sunday. Thank you for those joining us online for continuing to join us. Um, however, you are able that so we are not out of the pandemic yet. So we are still um, putting a puzzle together of how to, to bring this church together. And it's been a exciting and fun, interesting and um, a time of, of great learning. So thank you all for being here. Just a couple of announcements. One, remember we have our, co our congregational meeting following immediately after worship. We're going to be taking paper ballots, voting on paper ballots, because we have some people who can't come back to the sanctuary yet. We have, um, and so we, we're, we're still receiving some of those ballots in the mail. The mail can be slow, so we're going to be voting on paper ballots. Um, so we have those for you after the, the, the worship service. Also, a reminder, we are still taking our offering online and through that basket. We're not passing around plates. So those of you who've joined us in person, you can go to the basket to my right and place your offering there. Or you can go to our website and give online there or through the Givelify app on your phone. So I, will want, I keep forgetting to mention that for the last couple of Sundays. And so I wanted to make sure that I made that clear. Um, we do have one element of, of um, praise today. And I'm going to call Anna and Cece forward because they have made the decision that they'd like to join the church. So they've been coming for quite a while. I think, when was that Christmas? I think y'all were in our Christmas thing, 2020? 2019? 2019, our Christmas thing. So, and so they've been worshiping for quite a while. They're also doing, um, in charge of um, our children's church now, Pastor Q. Uh, has been helping to train them and to lead them um, in our youth group on Wednesday nights. And then Saturday, they go through uh, talking about what they're going to do on Sunday. So um, they are um, just making the decision to join the church. And so I have to ask you two questions. First of all, <laughs> okay, so we're going to have them raise their hands. You want them to come in closer to me? I've been vaccinated, so <laughs> it's okay if you break the six-foot rule. So we have... Siana Rodriguez, Cece. Oop, sorry, I just, they're easy to confuse, Anna and Cece. We just, um, and then um, Anna Batista. And so they are joining the church, but in order to do that, I need to ask you two questions. One, do you believe that Jesus is the Christ, Son of the living God? And are you making the decision to join the church out of your own um, relationship with Christ and your own decision making? 
All right, so we'd like to welcome you to Central Christian Church as full members of this church. So let's give them a round of applause and a welcome. Real quick, too, before you all run off, I want to say this. Um, Anna and Cece have been, throughout this year, have been working with Pastor Q, and Pastor Q has been spending the last, what is it, year and a half, two years, really pouring in to them and to our youth. Um, but it's one thing to have somebody want, wanting to pour in, and it's another thing to have an open vessel to receive that pouring. And they have really taken and been available. They've been uh, growing. They've been asking questions. They've been um, really on this trajectory of, of curiosity. And, and I really appreciate and applaud them for taking this, this approach. And I know that they are uh, they're blessed, and I know that they have a lot of um, bright, a bright future ahead um, as they go and they figure out who they are, who they're going to be, who God has designed them to be, and where God is leading them. So thank you all for being such an active part in the life of this church, and welcome as members to Central Christian Church. Um, if, if we have any youth, if they want to go ahead, if y'all want to go ahead and take the, the kids to Children's Church, we can go ahead and, and, and do that since y'all are, are already up. All right. So having welcomed them to the church, having made the, the, all the announcements that we have, I invite us to take a moment and as we prepare our hearts and minds for worship, think about why you're here. Think about what brings you to Central Christian Church. What is it that draws you to this community? Whether you're online, whether you're in person, what is it that brings you into this community? And let's prepare our hearts and minds for worship. <laughs> As we move to a time of prayer, I want to invite us to pray for the ways that community, whether it's this community or another community, has shaped who you are, has shaped who you are. I'll give you an example just to help us kick this off, but um, my original church that I started going to when I returned to church in 2000, what year was that, 2008, 2009, um, really showed me that church could be done in a different way, that it what didn't have to be done in the traditional way. And because of that, I was able to reconnect with my faith. I was, reconnect with, I was able to reconnect with um, a, a personalized faith that is not individualized but is one of great community. And we did a lot of, of things that really, um, really shaped me into who I am today. And so it was the stress of having all these different people from Pentecostals to Catholics to anarchists to, um, to people who didn't even know um, really what uh, faith was. And it was this group of people that came together to question, to ask questions, to, to uh, really think about what it meant to be um, where we were located, who we were, and that kind of intense moment of fire really shaped, um, really brought me into leading me into seminary, leading me into ministry. And so that's a community that has really shaped me. And so um, I pray that we can all experience that in some way, shape, or form. It won't always look the same, but we can all experience that. So are there, is there any prayers that we'd like to lift up in the ways that community has shaped who you are? A 
invite you to think about it. I invite you, because it's important to think that we're not an individual um, self-made person. We are people that come out of a context. So I invite you to think about that. And as we do that, let's, uh, let us pray. Lord God, on this Sunday where we come together to do the business of your church, when we come together to celebrate who we are, that when we come together to celebrate the life that, of this church that has been around for 204 years here in Danbury, Connecticut. We just thank you for this body that is still present, that is still doing ministry, that is still coming together as one body in your name. And we thank you for those who give up their, their, their time to serve this church. We, give up, we, we thank you for those who give up their bodies to, to, to devote physical labor to this church. We thank you for uh, those who, who, who give up their gifts and their talents so that we can worship, so that we can live, so that we can exist as a church. Lord, we thank you for those who support us unconditionally. We thank you those who challenge us because it makes us stronger. We thank you for the many ways that we have become who we are. Lord God, as a church, we realize that we are a physical manifestation of your risen Son, of your risen Christ. And so, Lord, let us always remember that that is who we are, that is who we're representing as we go out into the world, as we make decisions, as we, as we think about who we are becoming. Help us to be the resurrected Christ in this world, on this corner, just starting with this corner of West Street and Harmony. And Lord, as we as individuals go out into the world, into our homes, into our, our, our workspaces, into our, our, our fun spaces, let us remember, too, that we are uh, an embodiment of your resurrected Christ. And so let that guide how we live. Let that guide the decisions that we make. Let that guide just the ways that we present ourselves and, and, and are. And most, of, most of all, Lord, allow us to remember that it's your love it's your love that was your, your new and greatest commandment, to love each other as I have loved you. Lord, let us be, uh, be, that, be candles of this love so that we can light up this world. Lord, we thank you and we love you. We pray all of this in your son's name. Amen. I invite us to stand and... Boop. I'm sorry. I jumped the gun. Getting used to these, uh, these uh, various forms of worship. We are going straight from the prayer into our scripture reading today. And so I invite you to uh, uh, turn your eyes to the screen or on your pieces of paper which are found in your worship packets. And we are going to be reading today from the Gospel of John, the 15th chapter, verses 1 through 8. John 15, 1 through 8. John writes, I am the true vine. And my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit, and become my disciples. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Today my message is centered around the love that sprouts life. The love that sprouts life. We God, we thank you for this moment. We pray that your word will be heard. We pray that your word will be embodied. And we pray that your word will be lived. In your name we pray. Amen. So it may be a coincidence that we meet today. Today, on the first Sunday of May, when our bylaws require us to have an annual congregational meeting. It might be a coincidence that on this day of our congregational meeting, it is also the fifth Sunday of Easter. 
A day when we are still celebrating and contemplating the resurrected Christ. It may be a coincidence that on this day when we're having our congregational meeting on the fifth Sunday of Easter, that this is the scripture reading assigned to this week. It may be a coincidence. But see, I believe that when something seems like a coincidence, we need to take a deeper look at it because I think it has a deeper meaning for us. We need to examine what that message might be meant for us to consider. And so as we look at the scripture reading, this very popular scripture reading, this one that is uh, known even by people that probably don't read the Bible, when we read this scripture, we have to look at the context in which it comes out of. So Jesus has gathered his disciples together on the eve of the most important festival of the year, the eve of the Passover festival. And Jerusalem has become a dangerous place. The temple authorities have have tried to kill Lazarus because he was a a symbol of, of, remember, Jesus raised Lazarus, and he became a symbol for people to want to come to Jesus. They put a bounty out on Jesus' head. So the temple leaders, the religious authorities, are bloodthirsty at this point, and Jerusalem has become a dangerous place, and Jesus knows that his days are numbered. He knows his days are already numbered, and he's starting to be worried, I think, about his community because it's already starting to peel away. He's gathered his disciples together because he knows that Judas has betrayed him. Judas has separated himself from the community of Christ, separated himself from the love Jesus has for him, And he's gone and replaced that love with the love of money, with the love of power, with the love of access to power, or something else than centering himself in Jesus' love. And Jesus also is aware that in just a matter of hours, Peter will disown and deny Jesus three times in a short time. It's kind of like that family who is very close. They get together every holiday. They get together in the summers. They get together all the time at at the matriarch's house or the patriarch's house. But once that matriarch or patriarch dies, the family just kind of dissolves and never meets again. They become family in name but not in relationship. I think Jesus is worried about this happening to his community. And so he calls them together to reinforce who they are, to reinforce that he will always be with them, and to reinforce a vision that he has provided for them. And this vision is not one of a bunch of individual leaders. This vision is one of community, connected to him always. First, he gets them together and he washes their feet. He washes their feet as a symbol uh, of how they are called to serve in this world. Then he gives them the new commandment, to love just as I have loved you. And now he is offering his disciples this vision of connection, of relationship, and of community. Of how even though he might not be with them physically, he will, will always be with them spiritually. His word and his love will always be present. And he gives them the image of a vine and the branches. This idea that Jesus is the vine, this source of life, this sustenance, this, 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 this central force that sends out life to all the branches. And if the branches are connected securely with this vine, then they will bear fruit. Jesus is the vine. God is the vine grower, meaning God will be the one that does the pruning, will be the one that does the the discarding of the branches that aren't producing fruit. God is the vine grower. And we are the branches. We are the branches that bear fruit. Now see, I think it's interesting to think about this as a church because Jesus is, is giving a real image of community. A vine and the branches are all one being. One branch just can't go off and live somewhere else. Jesus is giving us a a, a vision, a metaphor of a community that's bound together in him. And as we come together as a church, I think it's important that we really take this in, what it means to be guided by the love and the words of Christ and nothing else. Nothing else. See, 
For too many of us, and I include me, I include all of us in here, we create something other than a vision of the church that, that is, we say is centered in Christ, but can very easily be turned into something else. People can, can uh, turn the physical structure of the church into what the church is. People can turn, turn the worship style into who the church is. People can, the church can, can be worried about how many people and who are in the pews as the church's identity and guiding force. We can do all sorts of things to create an identity as a church. But if we're not connected, making all of our decisions, making all of our, our, our centering all of our life, on the love of Christ, then what are we doing here? Why are we gathering together? I'll be honest, and this might make some people upset. We have so many churches in this world. And you know, churches have a lot of tax breaks. We don't pay property tax. We have all these, 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 these uh, breaks because we're religious organizations. I think churches that don't center themselves on the love of Christ they could do better work if they got rid of the building and built low-income housing because they'd be doing more for the people than if they were existing as a church without centering themselves on the love and the words of Christ. The church is called to be connected with Christ in such an intimate way that we are focusing everything we do on the love of Christ. Remember, we are the branches. Jesus gives a real picture of our particular role in this world. Jesus is the vine. Jesus is the source. God is the vine grower. See, sometimes we as a community can decide that we are the vine grower. We're going to do the pruning. We decide who's allowed to come and who's not. Who's welcome here and who's not. Jesus doesn't give us that option. Jesus says love, period, love. You have no say in who is welcome in my house. If they come in, you love them, period. It's up to them and it's up to God, between God and them, to work other things out. I think a lot of the things that the church worries about, God could care less about. And that's just simply because we're human and God is God. We are called to love. We're called to bear that fruit that comes about when we center ourselves, when we find our sustenance in Christ. And that sustenance is simply to love. That's why I believe Christ gave that commandment to love just as I have loved you. Who did Christ reject? Who did Christ turn away? See, when we decide as a body to center ourselves in, 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 in the love of Christ and, and the words of Christ, what happens? We get a love, we get a love that sprouts life in this community. We get, when we abide in Christ, Christ, Christ abides in us, and we bear fruit that can do amazing things. It's a, such an amazing time to be in a church when, when it's centered in, in, in Christ's love and things are just happening. It doesn't matter how many people are involved, but they have a, a ministry that touches so many lives. Because see, what does Christ say? Christ says, if you abide in me and, and my, my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. If we're truly living in the love of Christ, then we're going to know what to pray for. And when we pray for that, it will be given to us. That's what Christ says. That's what the Gospel of John says. But in order for that to happen, we have to find our life in Christ. And when we do that, I tell you, it's an amazing experience that will transform us, who we are as a group. There'll be drama, there'll be, there'll be disagreements, there'll be all this stuff that, that, that really is inconsequential in the long term, but, but, but it can all be discarded because we have that center of joy that guides our well-being. I don't know if we've experienced that joy in a long time as a church community.
Eugene Peterson, in a book that he wrote, um, he talked about this as a pastor. He goes to other, other um, these conferences and pastors talk about running the church and, and all this kind of stuff. And he says, I, I don't care about that. My job is not to be a, a business leader. My job is to do what we need to do to help the structure survive. And everything else is about centering ourselves on doing the love, doing the mission of Christ in the world. So as we think about what we're doing today, as we think about how we're going to be in, as a body that represents the resurrected Christ here in Danbury, here on Harmony and West Street, wherever you are in the world, when you think about where you, where you live, are you allowing Christ to be that central focal point that allows us to be plugged into a love that sprouts life? A love that sprouts life. A love that allows us to bear fruit. Fruit that we might not even know we can grow. But when we're plugged in to that central source of Jesus' love and Jesus' words, we don't know what is possible. We don't know where we will be led. We don't know who will come in. Let us find that love that sprouts life. Let us be centered in that love that sprouts life. And let us live in a way that sprouts life. Amen. I invite us to stand as we sing. Now we sing, Be Thou My Vision, verses 1 through 3. And it's, uh, the words will be on the screen.
that we not only take this bread and this wine in remembrance of you, but that we come holy and humbly before you with a heart that allows you to prune and transform us into to a heart that's more like yours, one that is selfless and empathetic, and one that is passionate for your church and your community. And Lord, we know that allowing ourselves to be pruned is uncomfortable, but we thank you for Jesus' legacy in words and in actions and in obedience to suffering on the cross, for we know with certainty that all things are possible through Christ who gives us the strength. Lord, we invite you to inhabit our hearts now as we take communion and we share this meal. Come, bind us together as one family, filled with your love. Thank you, Lord, for your grace that is in work, that is in, is at work in our lives. Amen. Please join me in reciting the words of institution by collectively proclaiming the words of Jesus, Jesus found in the bulletin. For I have received from the Lord what I also deliver to you, that the Lord Jesus, upon the night when he was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also the cup after supper saying, This is cup in my blood. Do this in For as often as you eat this bread and drink the, cu the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. You're invited to take the, the bread and the cup that has been given to you in your worship. Please help us close out this time of communion with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Take a moment and let's think about this week how we can center our whole lives around the love and the words of Christ. How can we live in a Christ centered way that allows us to love unconditionally, love radically, and love all? For those of you who are staying, you can just stay in your seats. We'll take a little bit of time to set up for the congregational meeting. Those of you online, thank you for joining us today. And for all of us, I invite you to go in the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.